Hi, I'm Gabriel Sarch, and you've reached the Hodgkin Huxley podcast. Now, you're probably wondering two things. What or who is Hodgkin Huxley, and what exactly is the Hodgkin Huxley podcast? Well, to answer the first question, Alan Hodgkin and Andrew Huxley were two scientists who developed a set of mathematical equations for our action potentials, which are the currency of neurons, are initiated and propagated. These sets of equations are known as the Hodgkin Huxley model, and their discovery has been very consequential to the neuroscience field. Their paper describing the equations have been cited over 22,000 times, and just to put that into perspective, most academic publications are cited fewer than four times. They also won the Nobel Prize for this work because it was really the first time that we were able to mathematically quantify and model individual neurons on this detail of a scale. So in tribute of them and their model, I've titled the series The, Ho titled the, series the Hodgkin Huxley Podcast. And so the motivation for creating this podcast was out of a desire to generate a platform for having an intellectual conversation to pick away at relevant and up-to-date questions in neuroscience, psychology, cognitive science, physics, really anything related to who we are, what we are, why it matters, what we know now, and what's coming next. Because for me, the human brain is a portal into fundamental questions about human limitation and potential, and even deeper questions about the universe. There are roughly 100 billion neurons in the human head, and each neuron is connected to thousands of other neurons. And all these connections make up the human experience, from emotion, to thinking, to decision-making, to action generation, to talking, seeing, hearing, breathing. They're all product of the billions of neurons working together in some insanely complex, seemingly magical way. And while it may seem like an impossible task to try to fully understand this evolutionary miracle, we've actually made a lot of progress in comprehending this thing. However, it has occurred to me that most people not in the neuroscience community are mostly blind to the psychological and neuroscientific progress we've made. Before I enter the field of neuroscience, and I'll get to my background um, in just a second, um, and maybe this is just a product of where I grew up or the types of media I digested, but um, I was generally unaware of how the brain works, the limitations of the brain, because there are definitely a lot. Um, and when I learned more about the, how the brain worked, it completely changed my outlook on the world. To understand the brain is to understand yourself. And I think everyone would benefit from getting a better understanding of why they are who we are, um, why they are who they are, and how they might be able to maximize their so-called brain power. So I've created this podcast to dig deeper into what makes us who we are and how psychology and neuroscience can be used to improve our lives, because it sure improved mine. My plan is to have people interested in the brain, including but not limited to professors, students, philosophers, really anyone with unique perspective um, to, to provide to the conversation. So if anything I just said might interest you, I hope you'll join me in trying to make more sense of the human experience. Um, so a little bit about my background. I'm a senior at the University of Rochester, um, and I'm a biomedical engineer by training, although my main interests are in neuroscience, as you might have guessed. I've done independent research in four neuroscience laboratories, both at the University of Rochester and at the National T Institutes of Health at Washington, D.C., and I'm currently in the process of applying to neuroscience programs. I don't claim to be a great conversationalist, nor am I experienced with hosting a podcast, but I am curious and I'm passionate about this topic, and I really do think the podcast format is the best way to have these types of conversations. It goes without saying that the mass media can sometimes skew or mislead scientific literature, and I hope this will be a more credible platform to be able to express neuroscientific ideas. And so on that note, I look forward to delving deeper into the mystical wonders of the human mind. I'll see you soon.